Hi everyone and welcome to the 8th video in the PBR Painter version 2.0 tutorial series. So in this video I'm going to be going through the baking tools that are available within the add-on. Specifically there is this bake button here and there's also a merge visible button. So first I'm going to look at the, the bake button, so I'm going to click that here. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to bake all of the different textures according to the channels that you've switched on within your layers. So it will figure out which channels are turned on and therefore which channels need to be baked. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to specify the resolution that you want to use to bake the textures, which I'm going to leave as default. The next thing you can do is you can opt to save the textures externally. So if you turn that on, you can specify a file directory and also the format and a bunch of other options uh, to decide exactly how you want to save the files. So this is really important if you're exporting for another piece of software and therefore you need to be very specific about your file format. So I'm not going to change it for now, I'm just going to use these for demonstration. But I am going to select a file directory quickly. So I've already set up a folder called textures, so I'm just going to save that into this one and I'm going to click accept. And what that's going to do is it's just going to bake everything into that folder. So with that being said, I'm going to click OK in a second, but first I'm just going to read the rest of this. So it does say that it could take several minutes. Obviously this depends on the resolution you use. It also depends on how many channels you want to bake. Um, and it says to open the system console before continuing to see the progress. So if you're a Windows user, the way to do that is just to click the window tab up here and then click toggle system console and then you'll get access to the system console here. If you're a Mac user, you can open Blender from the console itself and therefore you can have the console running in the background and then you can switch to that in order to watch this. You don't need to, but it does give you updates in terms of what's actually being done in the baking process. So now that I've got that open, I'm going to click bake and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to swap across to that system console. So as you can see, it's now baking the different textures. So the first one it's found is the base color, which it's baking. Then it's going to find the roughness. And then I believe, obviously, the normals need to be baked as well. So these updates, as I said, just let you know kind of where it's at in the process. And once it's finished, it'll give a message saying that it's finished. And therefore, it'll be back, everything back as it was. So I'm going to jump across to the folder that I actually saved those textures, just so I can show you. So as you can see here, it's saved everything with this naming format. So the naming convention it uses is the object name or the model name, so Suzanne up here, and the channel, albedo, normal, and roughness, and then the, the resolution that was used. So this is super handy, this uh, external baking, because this is obviously really important for a fast workflow, especially if you're exporting textures for another piece of software. So this is something that's brand new in version 2 and I'm really excited because I think this is going to be used a lot, especially if you're making materials for game assets and things like that. Alright, so I'm going to jump back into Blender. So the other tool, as I said, is a Merge Visible button and this is if you want to merge all your visible layers to a single layer. So you wouldn't often use this. One reason you could use this is with Eevee in terms of the material preview and also when, and also when using Eevee for rendering there is a limit on the number of image textures that you can show. So if you hit that limit, so I think it's around 30, and if you hit that limit, what will happen is your material will turn pink. So basically that means you've got too many image texture nodes in your material. So if that does happen, you can merge your layers and then keep working from that point, just to kind of compress everything to a single set of textures. So I'm just going to demonstrate that now. So I'm going to click Merge Visible. As you can see, it's very similar, this pop-up that comes up. Uh, I'm going to turn off Save Textures Externally because I don't want to save them in this case. You do get an extra option, which is to back up the current material. If you leave that on, it will basically make a copy of your material just because, as I said, when you merge these layers, you will create a single layer, and therefore you may want to have a backup just in case you want to go back and change something or redo the the merging. So I'm going to click OK again and I'm going to skip this in the video because it's going to be the exact same baking process that I just showed you. So that's finished baking now and as you can see it's joined it into a new layer and basically what it's done is it's created a, a new multi-channel layer and it's added the textures that were baked into the different channels in here. One thing you'll note is that it's kind of changed the look of the texture of the material sorry and that's because of the resolution that was specified. So whenever you bake a procedural texture like this, 
you will inevitably lose a little bit of quality and depending on the resolution that you set in the baking process that can be either a slight difference or it can be very different. In this case it looks fairly different and that's because it's basically blurred the edges of these kind of bumps in here and it's kind of had a fairly major impact. So if I wanted to, which I'm not going to do in this video, I could go back into my copied material now and just redo that process and use a higher resolution. But I'm not going to do that as I said. So this is now just a normal multi-channel layer. So because of that I can now add a new layer if I want to on top and then I can go through the normal process that I would normally use for painting. So in other words I can add a channel, I can just paint that over the top and everything functions as it did before. So that's really important as I said if you want to do that merging process but probably not something that you will be doing often. Whereas this baking button you'll probably use a lot especially as I said if you're exporting it to other pieces of software. Alright, I think that basically covers everything I wanted to go through, so I'm going to leave it there. There, this, at the moment, at the time of recording this video, this is going to be the last video in the series, but if I do add more videos later, I'll just continue on from this point. So if you've watched the videos from the start, I hope everything's been covered in good detail. If not, or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I also have a Discord server set up, which I'm going to put in the description, so definitely check that out. If you've downloaded the add-on and you want to kind of join in on the, the different discussion forums that are in there so there's there's places where you can report bugs there's places where you can ask questions there's places where you can just generally discuss the add-on there's, there's, there's also places where you can share your work if you want to do that so I definitely encourage you to check that out otherwise thanks for watching and if you haven't already please hit subscribe because I'm going to be adding a bunch more videos especially more application based videos so keep an eye out for those anyway thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time cheers